Sniper! I got him. Keep your head down, boys. He hit the floor before he heard the shot. The sniper's got talent. Ah, uh, Mike, how many meters do you think that was? 800. 800? I can't reach that with this thing. I got it. Got it. All right, Mike, open door left. Let's clear it. Come on. What's going on? Go, 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 go. Take it, take oh, it. Oh, God. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Bog Clava. I have an important friend with me here, Mr. Garantham. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, no problem, man. Technically, I stopped by. This is your ranch, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's true. Huh. Fascinating. Well, well, today we are going over the Mark 18, and we're going to go over the Mark 18 with the man who made them famous. I don't know if I made them famous. I, I just was autistically obsessed with them. Listen, I would say you have a direct fault in this, so let's dive on it. Let's do it. Now, to be clear, when I first started watching you years ago, you were a Mark 18 fanboy. I, I still am. You still are? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, now, what about the Mark 18 intrinsically was so interesting to you? I think the Block 2 program overall yeah. was really interesting. Mm. Uh, the Mark 18 I think was interesting because we're at the the very bleeding edge for the Air 15. It's the shortest it can possibly be. It's literally the antithesis to the uh, M16 A4, you know? So it's the exact opposite end. And then the Block 2 program is so interesting because we got these great rails from Daniel Defense, the uh, RIS-2, which was a phenomenally uh, strong and durable rail, and in mm. my uh, opinion, probably one of the best combat rails that could be made. Now, to me, I never was a big Mark 18 fanboy, mm. I, but it doesn't mean I didn't like them yeah. or the idea of them, but I was like, you know what, I, uh, I really want to do a video on it, especially when I have your ear to talk about it and yeah, chat about sure. it, because you were a big driving force, at least in my opinion, looking at a lot of my friend groups at the time yeah. when I was watching you, uh, when you were doing Mark 18 stuff, and you had a big influence on the culture of those Mark 18s. Now, I, I, I didn't, I, I, I disagree because- Why do you disagree? By, by the time I came onto the scene yeah. and, and my session with the Mark 18 began, the Mark 18 had been used for uh, nearly six or seven years in the GWAT. Well, right. So so we have, I was standing on the backs of giants um, and and talking to them about their experiences mm. with the Mark 18. And, and you know, the Mark 18 has its place. Yeah. It is a close, it is literally a close quarters weapon. You yeah. lose a, a shit ton of velocity you lose a, a shit ton of lethality mm. in almost every circumstance. And in fact, with most rounds, you had a fragmentation capability that was, a f in many cases, 100 meters or in. So you had a very limited rifle in certain applications. But when it came to raids and what it was made for, yeah. it really did excel in those particular roles. Well, one thing that I was thinking about is the influence that the military culture had on the civilian marketplace. Oh, 100%. I mean, you were in the military shooting yeah. these a lot. Yeah. Did you get trained on these bad boys at yeah, all? Yeah, for sure. So you're saying you weren't responsible. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I don't like that. I think that's, uh, your honor, I think that is dishonest. I'm not trying to be dishonest. I think of guys like Jeffrey Gerwich, you know, right. um, in his early ar articles on the Mark mm. 18, and and sure, maybe the maybe my video ended up getting watched more. Like I said, I stand on the backs of Titans. Right. Well, what I'm know? trying to say is that they. I don't think for their era, for when they were starting to use it, they yeah. weren't like obsessed with YouTube. Like. Well, no, and I was probably one of the one of the early YouTubers. Right. To that's kinda that's what I'm trying. Really to say. Get I'm not trying it. to say you're cooler than. Those guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm nowhere near as cool. No, worry, I'm not as cool as those guys. I'm not cool as those Yeah. Big so. shout out to Jeffrey Gerwich, by the yeah. way. He was cool. He did a lot of those early early articles on him and. Um, yeah, I just stand on the backs of Titans. I, I recognize that my YouTube videos are very popular, but you right. know, everything, you know, I, I don't think having an ego about anything is good. Well, no, that's good. That's definitely a good and sign that you're a rational adult. There we go. There we go. That's, that's what it. I was trying to say. Yeah. I think I got that point across. I get what you're saying because I made many videos on the Mark 18. Yes. I pontificated a lot about the effectiveness of it, especially mm. the suppressor. It is a very small package. Right. Which we're both very used to. Wait a second. <laughs> Come on, this video is sponsored by Aura. Aura is an excellent way to keep your online security safe. As someone who's been doxxed on the internet, I know that it's not a fun feeling, and Aura can help you with your online security. This information is accessible because of data brokers. Or will go ahead and contact those data brokers to have them scrub from all the telemarketers, spammers, so on and so forth. Aura will even opt out of junk mail and telemarketing campaigns. Aura also monitors emails and passwords to help you see if that info is floating around the dark web. 
and it also gives you recommendations on what to do if it is floating around on the dark web. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need inside one app. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you two weeks free trial with my link. You'll be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. So big thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Feel free to follow the link in the description down below. There should be a link popping up on the screen as well. So yet again, thanks Aura. Very cool. <laughs> they grow up so fast. They grow up so fast. Yeah, they really do. I love that boy. Good for him. He's got that dog in him. I mentioned earlier that the military has a large impact on the civilian firearms yeah. market because civilians oftentimes look up to the military because they, well, they're getting paid to train and they know a lot of stuff, right? Sure. So now coming back from the global war on terror, the hotness from all the high speed guys was like the Mark 18. Yeah. And a lot of civilians were like, you know what? I'm going to either build one out or that's my self-defense rifle that I want to strive to. And then now you also shake up with the fact where you're like, hey, not all threats are, you're not raiding a compound. You don't yeah. have the logistical support to raid a compound with like little birds and immediate evac. Maybe. It'd be cool if you did. It'd be, it'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be if super you did. sick. Yeah, it'd be sick if you were a civilian and had that capability. So what we're seeing now is the trend away from that, mm -hmm. where we're getting to longer range AR 15s, pushing yeah. it out to five to 800 to 900 meters. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the trends are going to follow the war, right? Because um, obviously, NSW Crane. Uh, the military has a lot more capability mm -hmm. to test these weapons fully, right? So it's like, if I want to buy a weapon that's going to be the ultimate combat rifle, I look at like a Block II. Yep. And you can buy a Block II or a very close analog to it through Daniel Defense, or you can get them made from Colt Parts. And mm -hmm. you can get a, a really solid combat rifle that's been combat tested for literally 20 years at this point, yes. right? Yes. So you have a great rifle. But, um, you know, as conflicts change, so do our tastes, right? So mm -hmm. um, current conflicts in Ukraine or in other areas are clearly pointing out that uh, in many cases, Cases when you have soldiers who don't have the support we talked about, they don't have little birds, they don't have constant air support. Mm -hmm. Well, shit. Then we're the only thing ranging each other is the very the firearms, right? right? So at that point, we have weapons like Mark 18s, which don't make as much sense. Then it's like, hey, maybe something like an SPR or a yeah. simple. 16 inch rifle, which does have 600 yard capability, no problem. Like yes. a, a standard AK-74, the 545 actually has a great BC ballistic, ballistic coefficient mm -hmm. and it's able to reach out pretty far. Right. So um, you're just seeing that change now where people are kind of recognizing that uh, conflicts might be a little bit different than what they had perhaps thought about. And it's good, right? We, we need to think about what the possibilities are. and. You know, you don't know what you don't know. That's right. You don't know what you don't know, but mm -hmm. it is a good sign that as firearms culture, we are constantly strive, striving to evolve. Striving to evolve. Ag agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we've talked about these guns enough. Yeah, it's time to shoot them in. I say we shoot some of these guns. Yeah, agreed. Let's do it. Let's shoot some rounds, see what they're capable of. Absolutely. All right, so now we're going to run some drills. Mike, what do you want to do first? Sure. Uh, a lot of people think that the Mark 18 is like a 50 meter in gun mm -hmm. however uh we can you can you can shoot out to 500 it does have a lot of drop so we have a target here at 175. okay and this is a good point about optic setup uh a red dot is fast, fast right compared to like a magnified optic mm -hmm. which are great for pid and many things but uh you're gonna see just how capable the mark 18 is so please take it away now how far is high right uh 220 220 and then 175 low 175 left? yeah okay definitely doable with what we have all right on you shooter Second target gave me a little trouble. <laughs> You're good, man. You're good. All right. Good. Gas up a little bit here. Are you running 55s or uh, 77s? Uh, 55 right here. Yep. I okay. mean, we really we need much else. For our, our grain fanatics. Yeah. 77 is great for long range, but yeah. not really needed. Or, or for short barrels. Well, it is, yeah. yeah. All right. And you're going to see how much this uh, big optic sucks. Okay. All right. On you. That, that, that uh, high left or high right target is a little tricky. <laughs> it's a little tricky, especially it's... with the uh, short eye relief. So yes. the bigger the optic in general, the, yes. the smaller your eye relief. So it is definitely tough because it has a native magnification to 2.5. Mm -hmm. Not a good time. No. Not a great time. But as you can see, the Mark 18 is very doable. Yes. It will absolutely do it. Now, we're going to have a little bit more trouble for you when we come uh, up to the 540. So let's go ahead and walk let's over there. Let's the 540. All right. Let me try this out. Let's see where our zero's at here. Is uh, those on the hill 540? Yeah. Okay. So this is where it gets challenging, right? As we get into the kind of 
outer ranges of 5.56. Five, yes. So we have targets at 5.40 right out, right out there, uh, gong, so it's about mm. humanish torso, yeah. somewhere right around there. Um, without good, uh, what we call PID, which is positive identification, mm. you're not gonna be taking these shots. This is where it's good to have something like a magnifier, mm. and that setup does allow you to throw a magnifier yes. on there. So that is the big reason for having a little bit of magnification. Um, because you want to know who you're shooting, for yeah, example, right? Absolutely. You, you don't want to take uh, errant shots. Huh? Errant shots? Er errant. Oh. E-R-R-A-N-T. Errant. That's, that's good. Responsible. Yeah. Be an adult. Precisely. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, start with the 18-inch. Uh, uh, it's got quite a bit of velocity, so, and plus with the optic, not that hard of a shot. Nice. Easy. Ah, ah. So, right. let me squeeze on in there. Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll spot for you, brother. Go. All right, I am spotter up. Right target? Right target. No call. Okay, you are two targets low and a target right. You're just under the target, half a target. Good windage. Impact. Just off the edge. Just under. It's cool because I can see your trace off your round. Damn. There are two targets low on that one. When did you good? Impact. Very good. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. That was um, some Kentucky windage. I think if I didn't have a spotter like Mike, I would be hurting right now. I'd be like, come on, because I can see a little bit of splash when I could get it underneath that target. It's, it's tough, man. And again, the Mark 18 is very capable of making those shots. Um, Mike on the camera guy does it all the time. Yeah. So that's where having something like a, the Tacom HQ is great. It's like a little magnifier mm. that throws up in front and recorrects your uh, zero for 500. You use those all the time. I think they're better than magnifiers. I yeah. don't even need a magnifier. You, you need a magnifier for PID. I don't need one. I don't. I don't ID anything. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot first, ask questions later. What a Chad! What a Chad! A quick note here. Yes, yes. Out of that particular barrel, 55 grain is going slow. Yeah. Right. So the problem that you run into isn't just drop. So your relative drop because of the speed of the projectile. It's also the amount of time that it's in the air is going to be yeah. longer than an 18 or a 20 inch or a right. 16 inch. So you have more time for wind to affect it, for whatever the fuck to affect it. Right. Those are things to think about when it comes to a Mark 18. But it is capable of making those shots at range. It is capable. It's gonna get a little trickier. It's gonna get a little dicey, it's but it will do dicey. it. It will do it for sure. All right, now let's play into the Mark 18 strengths. I wanna do some speed with some steel targets they have over here. So we're gonna go as fast as we can uh, with our setups. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, for this challenge, we're gonna do all nine steels out there. We have nine steels at varying distances, and we're gonna go as fast as we can. Can I break a shot timer? Nah, fuck it. Uh, we, we ball. Let's do it. All right, I'll go on your call, Mike. Shooter, you understand the course fire? I do. Stand by. Up. Hi. Impact. There we go. That was a little sloppy. I'm not proud of myself, but I got the job done. That's good shooting, boss. I think you should just brace off the barricade to start. I should. We can, we can go twice. You go. Uh, you go it's, all, it's all good. You say I, I can do it like you did it. Well, I'll do it like you did it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep it somewhat consistent baseline. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Shoot it right. Yeah. Understand course of fire. I do. Threat. Jesus Christ! That's Jason Bourne. Nice, man. You crushed Cleaned that one. Cleaned it. I think now I just look bad. Here, try it again. <laughs> try it again. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Mulligan, mulligan. Should we, should we go brace off the entire time? Well, the cool thing is you can edit this to do whatever you want. I know, I can just look You should fantastic. just speed it up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Three. Lucas. What? Oh. <laughs> should you set the course fire? I do. Stand by. Beep. There you go. Hi, hi. This one. Got it. There we go. All right, that felt a lot better. Dude, mid range here. shooting, the Mark 18 excels. Yeah. Like we're at from anywhere from 25 out to about 200. Yes. No problem, dude. The Mark 18 will clean up, especially with the Neotech. 
fast, mm, yes. super fast. And to be clear, we do have a grenade launcher on there as well. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't using the grenade launcher to begin with in that opening skit. You should have just. It's, a, it's only a 37 millimeter. It is 37 millimeter, I know. So I can call them like flares. Flare well. launcher. And flares. Well, it's only flare until you throw something in there that's not a flare. <laughs> My lawyer said that was a joke. That was a joke. Thanks, lawyer. Do you have any other challenges you want to try? Um, yeah, sure. So a big one that we do, uh, Mike, you're familiar with it. Uh, it's going prone, right? Because a lot of yes. uh, shooting in combat is going to be prone. Yeah. So it's about going prone and making consecutive impacts uh, okay. on a timer. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, for sure. Let's get up cool. there. So this is going to be a pretty interesting drill. Basically, we're going to be uh, going into the prone and then taking three shots. And we're going to do it. It's about mm, 280-ish from right here. Would you say, Micah? Yeah, I thought we ranged about about just shy of 300. Three, just shy of 300 at the base of the hill. Uh, the furthest one, about 350. Copy. Um, so we're going to do three sh target, uh, three shots at the base of the hill, mm. and it's basically just seeing how fast you can get into the prone, mm. get on your rifle, and deliver three accurate, well-timed shots. A lot of people rush to this, so take your time. Um, don't do anything crazy or anything like that. You want me to go first? Or you want to go first? Uh, I want to watch the, the yeah, master sure. at work. <laughs> Not a master, but that's very kind of you. All right, I'm All right. command to go. I'll go into prone. Is the shooter ready? Shoot's ready. Stand by. Right. Impact. There we go. <sighs> Missed that one. Anyhow, pretty simple, man. Yeah. Looks like I, uh, where's that that third impact where I miss? I don't know. Just off left. Just off left? Okay. Okay. Two rounds, you said? Uh, three rounds. Three, three, rounds. three impacts. Uh, my case, it took me four shots. Embarrassing. Amateur hour. Embarrassing. Em amateur hour. Hey, shooter, are you ready? Right. Stand by. Up. Impact. 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 There we go. There yeah. We go. Yep. Found oh. that hold. <laughs> the short barrel rifle's got a little bit more hold yeah, than you I think. Yeah, I was like, I started a little bit higher than I thought I was going to need. I yeah. Like, it just didn't pay out, so. It didn't. But once Wait. you find the hold. All right, here's a fun one to do yeah. right over here. All right, we're going to do synchronized shots. So if we're in Ghost Recon, we're trying to make sure that we deliver max amount of firepower on somebody, make sure somebody hits them. Uh, we're going to count down from three. We're going to start amateur hour. Copy. We're going to call, do a three, two, one, bang. Three, two, one, bang. Yep. Got it? Yep. All right. Let's you, target. Uh, we're going to do base of the hill. Base of the hill. It should have a brown patch right behind it. Left of it is a white barrel. All right. You ready? Ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> you out? No, malfunction. Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. Three, two, one. It's very satisfying. That is very satisfying. Very satisfying. That is delightful. Good old uh, six shot. Yeah, that was fun. You feel like I, you're in Ghost Recon? I feel like I'm living Ghost Recon right now. You are. We are the main characters. <laughs> we are the main characters, my brother in Christ. <laughs> but I mean, as you can see, Mark 18, yeah. completely capable weapon. Uh, you definitely get a lot more drop at distance, yes. but it can do it. Now, ballistically speaking, how many feet per second do you think is coming out of a Mark 18 versus your 18 I mean, it depends on the grainage of the round, right? Right. So, uh, if we have something like a 77 grain, uh, you're looking pretty significant. Yeah. Um, so, from the 18, you're getting around 27, 30 from a yeah. 77 grainer out at the, at the muzzle. Mm -hmm. um, from a Mark 18, you're looking around the 2500 range. Yeah. So, you're, you're losing quite a bit. Um, obviously, on something like 55 grain from 18, you're getting, you know, 3,000 plus, uh, Mark 18 is getting pretty slow, around 2,800. Yeah. Um, and that's where the Mark 18 runs into the problems because a round that relies on fragmentation, like the 55 grain or the 62 grain that relies on speed, mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't have it, yeah. right? So it loses that very quickly. So that's where with the Mark 18, if you really want to be effective, you have to use rounds that are that don't rely on velocity. So uh, the Mark 262, uh, 77 grain OTMs, those heavier rounds tend to do better out of the Mark 18 um, just due to the fact that they operate off a different principle rather than just speed alone. Yes. So, you know, it's a quick note. Science man has science words. I'm a man of science, what can he's I say? A, he's a cultured man of science. The cultured man of science. <laughs> okay, now obviously, the longer the barrel, the better the performance, right? But there are trade-offs because a longer barrel is a fucking longer barrel. Yes, absolutely. And, and it's a pain in the ass to maneuver around. Yeah. So sure, you can go 20, you can go 18 inch, and you can dominate on long, longer scenarios like this. However, 
Uh, you're in an urban situation, you're in CQB, like the 18, the 16 is really right. not it. You're absolutely right. I, I had time using a 16 inch on patrol. Mm -hmm. I had time using an 11.5 on patrol. When it came down to room clearing or clearing out stores, sometimes like in a Walmart, you have real quick rooms you have to clear out yeah. and all of a sudden you have a big open hallway you have to worry about. Now granted, in those spaces, it's everything's gonna excel. Sure. Out here in God's country in Idaho, <laughs> I mean, I want this bad boy right here. Yeah, right? of course. Right where we are right here in 18 makes mm -hmm. sense. If I want to fight whatever government tyranny I need to, exactly. uh, then yeah, based. an 18 inch base. Um, but yeah, man, like, again, there there is a, there's a place for everything, yes. right? So don't get it all caught up because we, me and Mike have talked about it, but like in Washington, the P&W, there's so many trees everywhere. It's it's kind of dense because of that. Like yeah. a 12.5, uh, a 14.5 kind of does make a little bit more sense than like an 18 or even a 16. Yeah. So you just need to take a look at your area and make uh, a decision. Right. You're, you're ultimately going to be sacrificing something because there's no like best of every world. So you, you can't need, have your cake and eat it too. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. So you have to find what's going to work for where you are. Um, and the great thing about the AR-15 is I can take that upper and I can put it on this lower. Yep. Or I can take this upper and put it that lower. So mm -hmm. worst case scenario, have two uppers. Yeah, these are all tools. Yeah, they're tools. Tools in the toolbox. Just like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Us. Also us. <laughs> also us. Don't also worry. us. Don't <laughs> this piece of shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Thumb, <laughs> thanks for stopping by and taking the time. I mean, in summary of this video, it's a little bit of water is wet, right? Yeah. Of course, short guns work good in small space. Long guns work good in big space, right? Yeah. Water is wet. This is basic stuff. It also helps to show you guys this stuff. If you're maybe just learning, you're just getting started, we sometimes forget the basics. And it's good to get back to those because it's fun. Also, it gives me an excuse to shoot and be in Idaho. So uh, Yeah, take a quick look out there. I mean, it's gorgeous yeah. out, right, out here right now. Um, Rohan, you already then, came through the mines of Moria into yes. Rohan. Yeah. Now I'm and gonna, now you're with the horse people. The horse people. Rohirrim! That's it. That's me. Am I Theoden? You're Theoden? Who's King more? Theoden. King Theoden. Is, who's the, what's the silver tongue guy? Or the Wormtail. Worm Grimo Worm Tongue. Grimo Worm Tongue. Grimo, Micah's Grimo Worm Tongue. Micah's Grimo Worm Tongue? <laughs> what, is it, what noise does he make? He doesn't make a noise. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, I have nothing else for you. Do you have anything else for him? You know, I would, I would advise him that time is important. You know, oh, people, people very much so forget that time is the only investment that you never get back. So spend it wisely. Um, you know, time could be that could have spent pl playing video games or, or doing other, other frivolous activities. Could be spent with family and doing things that can improve yourself and make an impact on humanity. So spend your time very wisely. Don't waste it on things that don't make any sense, especially people. If there's someone's wasting your time, it's a, it's a very finite resource. You'll never get it back. You'll never get that back. Gentlemen, we have nothing else for you. As always, stay easy, stay breezy. We'll catch you on the flip.